Oh, hello folks, it's Ken David Stewart uh, here this morning, and uh, couldn't title uh, today's episode The Play That Refused to Die, uh, because I've noticed that a play I stopped writing actually in September called Roswell 1947, uh, actually I had, you know, not that I stopped writing so much as I stopped revising it and I stopped uh, posting it, um, but there still appears to be some interest in it that I've, uh, you know, I picked up by checking my uh, my stats, and I don't know if it's the greatest story, but I think it's a good story. It's funny, and uh, so for those who are still reading it, um, let's let's move on. I think that I got to around page thirty nine from what I checked on uh, WordPress last time. And let's just have a look uh, from where we got to. Anyway, to give you a bit of a background, I don't think I'll go back and do the, you know, like a synopsis of the whole story on this one. Uh, but I will let you know uh, that in this particular scene, uh, it involves the FBI the late J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, it involves the two uh, radio uh, DJs from Roswell, Dwight and uh, Rick. And uh, the thing is that the FBI have uh, pulled right into the, you know, the parking spot next to the uh, to the radio station. They've seen the dog catcher's truck there which is allegedly stolen and uh, because it's a, a city vehicle, the uh, city of Roswell vehicle, uh, it is being, uh, it has been referred to the FBI in this case. Now at this point I should say that uh, everything I've written in here is fictional. So you know any resemblance to any characters real or otherwise uh, I've made up you know like this is fiction this is this is for fun so don't run to a reference source or something and say well that didn't happen I know it's supposed to be ridiculous now here's I think we're approximately the spot we got to J. Edgar Hoover says put your hands on the table where I can see them and don't move narrator Hoover puts his cigar out in Dwight's coffee. Dwight, what'd you do that for? There's an ashtray on the table. Hoover, are you questioning the FBI, son? Dwight, of course not, but what are you doing here? Hoover, I've just found a stolen government vehicle in one of your parking stalls out front. Rick, who is the co-announcer. What stolen vehicle? Hoover, the dog catcher's van. Dwight, all oh, right, the two dog catchers have gone looking for their keys. A rancher has the keys to their van, but the Air Force kidnapped them. Narrator, Hoover starts looking at the keys hanging on the key ring. Hoover, well, isn't this interesting? This set of keys is property of the city of Roswell. Well, I wonder if they might start the dog catcher's van. Narrator, Hoover sends his assistant Richard out to try the keys in the van. Richard comes back. The keys start the van up, no problem, sir. Hoover, you boys are now in some hot water. Theft of a government vehicle will get you 20 years in the state prison. But that's the least of your problems. Where have you hidden two dog catchers? Rick. Uh... They're probably out in the desert getting shot by General Kane as we speak. Hoover. And why would the Air Force want this rancher dead? Wait. Because the rancher found a crashed flying saucer and saw some dead aliens in the back of General Kane's Jeep. Hoover. How do you guys know about this? You're probably Soviet spies to boot. Rick. No, we're not. Over to the next page. Hoover. You boys are digging yourselves in deeper and deeper every time you open your mouths. Let me see now. 
We've got you on theft of a government vehicle, kidnapping, lying to an FBI agent, and possible homicide charges, not to mention being Soviet spies. Dwight, I have an idea, sir. If we can find Harvey and Haas for you, it will prove that we've been telling you the truth. Now, Harvey and Haas are the two dog catchers. Rick, great idea, Dwight. I think I know where to find them. The last time we saw them, they were dressed up like cartoon characters and were on their way to the compound to find Haas's car. Hoover, dressed up like cartoon characters? What for? Dwight, Haas and Harvey didn't want their boss to recognize them. Rick, if their supervisor Ross saw them, he'd ask them where the van was. Hoover, Richard, handcuff these boys and put them in the car. We're on our way to the city compound. You boys better hope your story checks out. Okay, now we're on Act 9, Scene 2. Uh, in this scene, we've got... Uh, oh, it's, We've got Sheriff Pyle, a narrator, a county clerk, uh, Judge Colonel Sanders, as of Kentucky uh, Fried Chicken fame, KFC. Uh, and that's about it for now in this scene. Okay, let's go right to it. Sheriff Pyle, I don't have enough room in my jail for all you people, so we're going to straight to the courthouse for your trials. Narrator, Sheriff Pyle, Escort these prisoners into the Roswell City Courthouse. Count, county Clerk. What can I do for you, Sheriff? Sheriff Pyle. I need to get a trial for these people as soon as possible. Are you busy today? County Clerk. That's ah, kind of slow today. Just two cases so far. One guy charged for jaywalking and the other one for letting his dog poop on his neighbor's sidewalk. I think the judge fined both of them and sent them home. Judge Colonel Sanders. Are any more cases on the docket today, George? County Clerk. Sheriff Pyle just arrived with a new case. Judge Sanders. So what have you got for me today, Sheriff? There was a big brawl at the hospital. I have four defendants charged with assault and causing a public disturbance. Judge Sanders. Do they have legal representation? Sheriff Pyle. No, sir. Judge Sanders. Which lawyers are available, George? County Clerk. Perry Mason and Matlock are arriving in town this evening. Judge Sanders. Good. Leave a message at their hotel rooms and tell them to show up in court at 9 a.m. tomorrow. County Clerk. I'll get right on it, sir. Sheriff Pyle. Judge, where are the prisoners going to stay overnight? There's no room for them at the jail. Judge Sanders. Rent them some rooms at Dusty's Tavern. Just make sure you have guards supervising them. Okay, and I think I'm going to hold it uh, there for now. And we'll continue with the story next time. And I'll probably be putting this in printed form too, possibly with some res revisions or possibly just the way it is. And I'll probably do another video kind of summarizing uh, for people who haven't started reading the play, uh, kind of a synopsis of what's, uh, what's happened so far so they can kind of, kind of catch up. Okay, well, uh, have a good day, people. This is Ken David Stewart signing out.